Okay, we're going to make some uh, ambles today. The hunchback. She's 97 kilos. Now we're about to um, melt some steel today for our ambles. It's a special mix that I use for my ambles alone. You won't get the recipe, but you'll get to see a few things that go into it. And also you'll see water quenching afterwards. We'll, we'll start this furnace up and get things running. Come around the back. Well, we'll... Well, what do you got here? This is how I, I make my power for the furnace. It's a, it's a generator. It's a Detroit V8 supercharged diesel. And uh, we produce 350 kVA. So basically there's enough power to do a thousand homes um, to keep them well lit. So what we'll do, we'll, we'll give it a kick in the guts. We'll start it up. She'll make a bit of noise. This is one of my favourite parts, starting the generator. Um, something that, uh, of the founder I really enjoy. And this is the next bit I like, turning the power onto the furnace. We just like to preheat the uh, the ladle just to take the chill off the uh, the metal and to stop any cracking of the lining of the ladle. Uh, something we don't need is metal to run all over the place, so that just ensures that the, the ladle is ready to go. Um, we sort of start that straight away to get the temperature up pretty high when we're doing steel. Um, we find that the ladle will freeze up if you don't preheat the uh, preheated hot enough. We probably want it about you know, somewhere around 800 degrees. Um, Preheating pre moulds is, is important depending on the material you're using. The backyard usually does aluminium and, and, and metals sort of low temperature. You don't really have to preheat those unless it's a thin wall casting you're looking at. Um, thick wall castings are, are, are sort of, you know, it'll be fine it's just a matter of um, experience will come the more things you do I'm a bit luckier than most people I have an electric induction furnace it's hydraulically tilts for me Um, I'm just adding a bit of manganese into the uh, the furnace now. Um, it's just a part of the uh, the recipe for to make um, my anvils. And here we are, just tilting the metal back and forth. What, the reason I tilt it back and forth so it doesn't bridge. It's a very important thing um, not to have the metal bridging. And bridging is a common terminology in foundries where what happens the the metal down the bottom superheats and the, uh, the metal at the top hasn't moved into it, so it creates a bridge across the top of the furnace. And that's, that's definitely a big no-no when you're melting metal. Um, there are things that we can talk about a little bit later on, but um, you just gotta be, when you're melting metal, you need to be very safe and conscientious of what you're doing. It's something that I, when I'm melting the metal, I'll never leave the furnace. Here we go, just start the, the slide in again. Um, the more metal I get into it, the quicker it sort of starts melting into it. But the 500 kilo furnace, there it goes, falls in. We like to action replay the, the metal sliding into the, the furnace. But from, from when I, I start that furnace to get the first bit red hot, it would take literally less than a minute. It's very efficient. 
and the little 100 kilo furnace which you'll see later on, or, or I'm not sure if we've done videos of, or out, of the, out of the 100 kilo furnace, um, but that, that, that's less than half a minute, I'll have the metal red hot, um, that's very efficient. The, the 100 kilo furnace, I'll melt 100 kilos in 20, 30 minutes maximum. Yeah, well, that's something we'll be showing a lot a lot of interesting things on the videos we're doing um, what we're trying to do is just get people to have a good understanding where, where products come from and how to make things um, something that it's a lost art form and hopefully we can keep it alive in Australia these little action replays as I said before it's just the uh, the metal falling into the into the uh, furnace What I'm doing with the uh, the metal staff is just ensuring that the metal's going down at an even rate. Those little balls of paper there—that's the uh, the aluminium for the um, for the steel. With aluminium, um, it deoxidizes the steel. Um, it's certain quantities. It's it's a bit of a funny ratio, but uh, they're things that that will let people know a little bit later on as well. So. We'll be giving a lot of information out about founders. There'll be no secrets. Um, one of the problems we have is that there's so much information to give out. We don't want to overload people to start off with. And we're welcome for questions too. So if you've got a question about something, by all means, ask it. I'll only be tapping out 150 kilos of steel per section. Um, one of the problems with steel is that it solidifies really quickly and, and, and chills really quickly. By using the 100 kilo furnace um, we're going to be able to maintain a regular constant temperature through each mould um, that's something I've found um, is very critical is your temperature that you're going to pour the mould at and the temperature you're going to tap the metal out of the furnace at there is sometimes when you can lose a hundred degrees from going from one label to the other or from the furnace to the label That substance I'm sprinkling over the top, it's uh, Clinomet. Um, I buy it in drum form, obviously. But um, what it does, it makes any impurities of the metal stick together and, and makes it easier to get out of the furnace. Um, as, you, as you imagine, if you put a steel bar into that furnace or into the metal as it is now, it'll just melt it. So I need something to make it stick to the steel bar so I can get it out. Um, and a lot of the times I like to have a bit of slag on the stick so so that's gone hard so it'll actually help drag the, uh, the the other slag out it sort of sticks to the slag we're just pushing up over 1580 now um, we're getting real close now so this is where I've got to be very diligent well, the, the, the temperature we want to sort of get to is um, Sort of about 16.30 is what we're going to punch this out at. One of the reasons I can do 16.30 is because I preheated the ladle. Um, um, if I don't preheat that ladle, even at 16.30, the metal will solidify into the ladle. And uh, th then you imagine how hard it is to get out of the ladle. Um, it's just hell, really. <laughs> but, um, so we're about to pour it now. Um, this has slowed down. This is, a lot of people enjoy watching the metal getting poured. Um, as you can see, me and my son are, are wearing our safety suits. Um, they're, they're essential when you're pouring steels. Well, this is where I get splashed with sparks, and Jamie gets splashed with sparks. Uh, I say sparks, but they're actually balls of molten metal. And uh, the uh, safety suits come in pretty handy at the moment. Um, you, you'll see in some videos where I don't have buttons on my shirt that's because the metal's melted the buttons off my shirt so um, the safety suits are, are very handy even the screen, I can still feel that temperature through that visor that I have I'm just throwing a bit more uh, slag off or uh, clean met they call it and uh, I'll just purify the metal 
no, I won't stir it. It's, as it pours into the uh, the ladle from the furnace, it's it's mixed enough. The metal sort of it's you do need to, to mix it in, but that just the turbulence that that causes from one to the other, it'll all be 100% mixed in. I've just put the slag off on top. Um, I like to uh, stir it just before I take a sample. Um, I stir a lot of my cast iron. Um, with the steel, I don't really have to stir it that much because it mixes, the, the, the weights are, are, are quite similar and it will mix easily. And here we go, we're going to pour again. This is another one of the good parts. It, it's a bit hard to see because the, the metal is actually white hot. Um, something a lot of people don't actually get to see white hot metal. Um, I've touched the metal there, must have had a bit of slag on top there and I've just quickly flicked it out. Um, my glove would be still burning now, but I'm just conditioned to the heat. You can actually, if you look, you see a bit of smoke coming off my glove. Uh, we just filled it up and come out the back vent hole so we know she's full. Um, the runner cup's a little bit higher than the, uh, the vent hole, but that, that's not here nor there. As long as we, we fill it up to the top of the vent hole, it'll be fine. And as you'll see, when we knock the castings out. Um, I'm just putting a little bit of sand on the, uh, the metal there just to um, stop the heat radiating off it. I've just topped it up a little bit more um, it doesn't kill you just to, to, to fill it up a little bit more. It, it's not the end of the world. My anvil metal, we, we separate it from all our other metals. Um, it's a very expensive metal. Um, and, you know, it, it's something that if you're not careful of your metals, your wastage on them, it, it, it will cost you a fortune. Um, But here we go, we're just doing the weights. This is, keeps all the boys pretty, pretty trim and fit. Um. <laughs> we've, got, we've got our anvil molds here, they're red hot. We're going to quench them, we've got to harden them, yeah? Yeah, we're just going to knock all the sand off, get all the, uh, off the next red off the top, and then we're just going to water punch them. We okay. The surfaces that we need to be hard, so we'll get the bed hard and then we'll get the horn hard as well. That's about it. And that's something that a lot of people don't understand about foundries is that we are the ultimate recyclers. A lot of the materials that I use is recycled scrap steel and um, it just makes no waste. We look at every little bit of metal that we pour to go back into the furnace to make something else. We just knocked out this anvil. This, this anvil, she would be somewhere around about 1200 degrees, maybe 1500 degrees on the outside. Um, the reason we knock them out a bit early like that so we can water quench and harden the, uh, the horn and the, uh, the bed. This, this water is just automatically turning to steam. Jamie's got pretty efficient about what we're quenching and how to quench it. Jamie's been coming to work with me since he was 10 years old. He's, um, pretty efficient for a young bloke for what he does. We want certain parts hard and certain parts soft. It makes our anvils the best. A lot of the people will fully quench an anvil, which is fine. And here we have a few different size anvils. The next process is coming soon in the next video. And thank you very much for watching.